morning. Today we're going to be looking at um, the pronoun and antecedent, and antecedent agreement because I see a lot of times students making errors in 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 your writing. So um, I wanted to go over this so that you know what pronouns go with what so that you can avoid any ambiguity and so that you can avoid confusing your reader. So if you look at this screen, please ask the guest to remove. Do you know what pronoun you would put in there? After this, you should be able to talk about it. So obviously pronouns, they stand for, um, they take the place of the, the proper name in the sentence. So let's look at the examples. Jeff is teaching Jeff's physics class about quantum mechanics. Now, what's bad about this sentence is, is it appears that there are two guys named Jeff, which is kind of strange considering the spelling of the name, but there are two people in this class and so it's confusing. Instead, what you should do is Jeff is teaching his physics class about quantum mechanics. His clearly refers back to Jeff. The antecedent is the word for which the pronoun stands. So in this case, his, this pronoun is what's going to go for before it. So the pronoun is his and Jeff is the antecedent. And then in, I guess, I don't know if it's Latin, but I know for sure in Spanish, ante um, means before. Here are your pronouns. We already looked at this when we looked at point of view, so I'm not going to go um, over it in detail, but just remember uh, non-formal, informal, sorry, non-academic papers would be first person, non-academic papers, remember that's you, yours, and yours, but remember the formal, which is where we're going to be for all of our writing, is the third person, he, him, his, her, she, it, they, theirs. All right, pronoun rule number one is the pronouns have to agree in number. So make sure that you're always, if you have a singular pronoun or singular noun, you need to use a singular pronoun. If a student parks a car on campus, he has to buy a parking sticker. Again, he is the pronoun, this is the antecedent. Now a bad example, and you will hear this all the time, especially like when uh, principals come over the, news, the um, loudspeaker, they will say, if a student parks a car on campus, they have to buy a parking sticker. You've heard that a million times, but if you go back to your chart, and you're talking about a singular student, it has to be one of these pronouns. They are not plural, right? Because you're talking about a student. So that tells you um, which one to use. Um, this, is, this is something that's really tricky to remember. You just, this is just something you have to commit to memory. But words that are like all inclusive, everybody, anybody, anyone, each, neither, nobody, someone, a person, etc., are gonna take the singular pronoun. So going back here, then they have to take these ones, okay? So when a person comes to class, he should have his homework ready. Perfect. Um, bad example, when a person comes to class, you should have your homework ready, or when a person comes to class, they should have their homework ready. Ready. Now, I know why you guys do this, because I do it too. Um, when I speak, but in your writing, make sure that you're correct for sure, is we have, we're, we're a society that is very uncomfortable with singling out any one person or any gender or any race. So instead, we've just tried to like blanket copy everyone so that they know what um, what their thing is. Alright, rule number three. These are bad examples. Um, so let's look at them. Although the motorcycle hit the tree, it was not damaged. Now what's wrong about this is, is the pronoun is it, but we're not really sure what is referring back to. What is its antecedent? We're not totally, totally clear. Is it the motorcycle or is it the tree? We don't know. Um, right here, I don't think they should show violence on TV. Who are they? Again, we don't, I mean, it was never identified earlier in the sentence, so we don't even have a pronoun as to what the antecedent would be for that. Um, if you put the sheet in your notebook, you can refer to it. Um, is it the sheet? Is it the notebook? Is it what you wrote on the sheet? We're not sure. So again, just make sure you're very clear on whatever it is that you say. And then, th I think this is a great quote, talking again about the gender, being gender neutral in your writing. Um, Minion Fogarty, she is the grammar girl, and she is so funny if you're into grammar jokes. Um, anyhow, it says English doesn't have a good singular pronoun to use when you don't know the sex of a person we're talking about. In speech, people already use the commonly, or sorry, already commonly use the plural pronoun there in such cases, but many writers object to using there as a singular pronoun in writing. Some people even cringe when they hear it in speech. If you wish to be cautious, use he, she, or his or her. All right. So remember, in your writing, gender neutral is out. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let me know.